what is up Prince Squad and to any new viewers what's up to y'all too today I'm doing a video and I'm gonna be showing you guys how I designed the shirt that I saw in a store for my son I kind of stole an idea yeah but I'm not selling it it's just for one shirt for my son the other shirt actually they didn't have it in his size and I'm actually gonna be changing it up just a little so the other shirt you can take take a look at it right there and once I get the new shirt design, I'll put them both on the screen so you guys can compare them. So I'm going to show you guys how I create the design in Photoshop and take you through the steps of printing the t-shirt. So if you're interested to see how everything turns out, stay tuned. All right, Print Squad. Uh, the first step into designing this t-shirt that I'm going to show you is to open up Photoshop. So I have Photoshop open. Okay. And usually, because most of the shirts that I print, I use size 13 by 19 transparency film. So I'm going to open a new file. And it's already set to 13 by 19. So hit OK. And I always like to hit the View button and make it fit on my screen so that it's as big as I need it. So um, the words that I'm going to use is Gotta Stay Fly, as you've seen on the other shirt. So I'm going to hit the caps lock button and I'm going to type in gotta stay fly and I'm going to resize it. So I go to edit free transform and resize it. And if you hold the shift button as you resize, it will resize it in proportion. So this is what I'm going to go with for now. And I'm going to hit enter. Okay. As you see what the shirt looks like right here on the side of the screen. I'm going to show you guys the way that I do what I usually do to find the font. Now that's just a bold font. It's not really any special font. So basically what I'm going to do is copy that and go through. And it's a few fonts that I can actually think of that may work for this because they're a little similar. Okay. I just passed one up. Where is it at? Let me see. Just basically like an aerial font. I'm going to. All right. There's one right there. That one is called. Gadugi. That's G-A-D-U-G-I. Okay. That's one that you can use right there. But what I'm looking on there. The O is more round. And if you look at the design. The O is more elongated. So I'm not going to go with that one. Let me see. Ariel could be one. Okay, I'm going to try Ariel and see. Okay, on that one, the O is still not the way that I want it either. So basically, what I would do is just go through until I found one that had the O. Basically, that looked the way that I want it to look. So, okay. Okay, that one could work. Yeah, that one could actually work right there, but I don't like how thin those T's are. So I have one other idea of one that I could use. Okay, so I'm going to go with impact right here. So I'm going to edit free transform because impact is a little bit smaller. I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger. Now... I like to create my stuff in Photoshop and then take it to wherever I need it, like whatever program I need after that. So right here, I basically have the design. So what I'm going to do now is come over to the side right here. And as you see on the design, the O and the A's, they do not have open spaces. They've been filled in. So what I'm going to do is come over here and use the paint bucket tool. And I'm going to choose black for the foreground color. So for the foreground color, I'm going to pick black. And it's already on black. So all I have to do is click on it. And it's going to tell you it must be rasterized before you proceed. It's basically just telling you you won't be able to type any more letters in it. So be sure that everything is correct before you use it. And then you fill in all of the empty spaces right here. So I'm going to take the view off so that you guys can see everything. So basically, this is what we have right here. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and save it. And because I already have it saved, I'm not going to actually save it now. But you would hit the save button and save it. And in order for me to be able to take it into Rolling, Co Rolling Cut Studio, I would have to save it as a JPEG. And it's actually two ways that you can do this. It's, uh, but I'm, I actually like to do everything in Photoshop. But this one could be easy even if you did it in Rolling Cut Studio. So now I'm going to open up Rolling Cut Studio. And once I open up Rolling Cut Studio, I'm going to basically just find the design on the computer right here. And I'm going to get this and drag it into Rolling Cut Studio. Okay, and it's huge. And that's what I like to do when I create my designs in Photoshop. I like for them to be huge. And then that way when you have to shrink them down, it won't lose anything. So right here you go to image outline and extract contour lines and right now it's creating the lines for me and I'm going to hit OK. So right here I'm just going to delete that because I don't need it anymore. And because I know I'm doing this on a youth large t-shirt I'm going to change the properties, keep aspect ratio and I want it to be the width of 11 inches so I just hit 11. And as I click right here, it shows that it's going to be 11 by 10. So I hit OK. So now that I have it right here, everything is correct. I don't really like the way the Y's are looking right here. Yeah, I don't like how they look. So basically, I'm going to show you what I do when something like that happens. I basically just go right over here and I'm going to take the word fly. But I'm going to put two Y's, so F, L, Y. Then I go to properties. And I forgot I'm going to put two Y's so that I can use one Y for each, each of the ones that's messed up. And I go to format. And you don't have to do all this, but I like to put it as it should be. I'm going to center it. And then I'm going to find the font impact. And hit OK. So now what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring this down here and I'm going to line it up and make it the exact same size as what I have right here. So basically just stretching it out, stretching it out. And once I get the Y and you can zoom in on that, but once I get the Y the way that I like it, then that's good right there. So then what I do is I'm going to slide this over. Actually, you can see it's slightly off and I want it to be lined up perfectly. Now the Y is not going to wind up perfectly because as you know, you know, it's a little bit off. So right here, bring that up slightly. I want it to be perfect. The bottom is lined up perfectly. Okay, so that is almost perfect. Slide it over slightly. Then slide this over slightly. Okay, so let me see. All right, so that is pretty darn close to perfect. It's not perfect, so I'm just going to go with that. So now I'm going to zoom out a little bit and what I'm going to do is break the polyline. So first I have to create it. First I have to convert it to a polyline. So now it's that it's a polyline, I break. Now that I have this polyline, I can now break it and I don't need anything but the Y. So now that I've converted to a polyline, I can no longer type anymore. So once I break the polyline, I can delete the two letters that I don't need by selecting them and hitting the delete button. So now I would take this Y and I would just place the Y right here where I need it to be. Come over here and place this other Y right where I need it to be. And make sure that's the place because that will move slightly. Okay, so I have them where I want them to be now. So I go here. And I hit object 
and I break polyline. And now what I want to do, and the way that I can tell is by zooming in close. I want to click outside of that and then click back inside of it. And I want to delete the Y that is messed up and not the way that I want it to be. So right here it's on the good Y. So right there, I've accidentally deleted the wrong one. So I hit undo, click back outside and click inside. And now you see the Y that is messed up. Delete that one. And as you see the edges on this Y is straight. And here I want the inside Y. So I've deleted that. So as I zoom out, you can see that everything is good. So I select everything once again. And object integrate polylines. And I always like to put a weeding box around everything to make it a little bit easier to weed. So, and you know, I like to zoom in and get the weeding box as close to the design without touching as I can. Just as close as I can. And then I mirror the image. And while you're doing all this, I haven't saved it because I actually have it already saved. I just decided to go back and make this for you guys. Okay, now the next thing I would do is go ahead and cut it out. But you could save it as whatever you want it. Save it as, and I would go ahead and cut everything out. Now all I have to do is cut it out and get ready to press the shirt. So now that I'm done creating the design, I'm trying to decide should I print the shirt in just plain red vinyl or should I print the shirt in glitter vinyl? Hmm. Okay, to match those shorts, I think the red, I wanted to do it in glitter, but I think that the, the red vinyl is actually going to match better. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and go with just the plain red vinyl. And this vinyl right here, this is Stahl's Econo print. All right, and since this design is really simple, I'm gonna go ahead and weed it right on top of the heat press as I'm waiting on it to heat up. Alright, my heat press is all warmed up. I folded my transfer in half so that I can find the center point easily and now I'm ready to print my shirt. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And once you do, make sure you hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time I post a video and you won't miss out on any other future videos. And if you're interested in any of the products or equipment that I use in my videos, be sure to check below this video in the description box. I always leave links for you guys. And I will see you in the next video. Print Squad out.